Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. Today I'm delighted to introduce to you Instamask, a new powerful luminosity mask panel for Photoshop. Now this is going to be included from now on in Raya Pro, so you get two panels for the price of one. And if you're an existing Raya Pro customer, I've already emailed you a link to download Instamask. If you didn't get that email, please go to the description of this video in YouTube and you'll see some instructions for downloading the panel. So this here is Instamask. And as you can see, we have a lot of buttons and sliders. If you don't know what a particular function does, let's say we want to know what test does, we can go to this drop down box, go to guide and choose the correct button. So we see test and there this will explain exactly what each button does. So it's very easy to understand exactly how to use the panel and how to use each button. Now, the panel is set out in three distinct sections. This top section is for creating luminosity masks or any other type of mask. The middle section is for refining our masks and changing our masks. And the bottom section is for applying masks. So for example, we can apply a mask to a curves layer or an Orton effect layer. Now let's take a look at the masks in the panel. So in the panel, we have 18 16-bit luminosity masks. We have our bright masks along here, our dark masks along here, and our mid-tone masks at the bottom. So if we want to create a brights mask, we just press B1 and that's brights 1. Or we can press B5 and that's brights 5. And there's darks 1. And you'll notice we don't have to delete any layers. It does that automatically for us. And we only create some layers in the layers panel. We don't create any luminosity masks in the channels panel. So we keep our workflow very light and quick. Now you'll also notice it takes about one or two seconds to create the luminosity mask. So there's a slight delay. If you want to speed up how quickly we preview the luminosity masks, we can press all LM and this creates all of our luminosity mask channels. Although this will give us a larger file size, we can delete the luminosity masks at any moment. But for now, let's create the luminosity masks and see the advantage of using the channels here. So essentially, this will speed up the preview for the luminosity masks. You can see that we're just pressing it and the masks are generated almost instantly. And let's say we've chosen a luminosity mask. Let's say Bright's one. We can press delete luminosity masks and you'll see this yellow and red screen. To go back to your luminosity mask, you press mask. Or if you want to go to your RGB channel, we press RGB. And now in our channels, there are no more luminosity masks. Now let's say we want to blend these two exposures. We have a darker exposure here and a brighter exposure here. We want to recover the sky from the darker exposure and place it into the brighter exposure. So we don't have to apply the mask straight away. We can test our masks and we can do that by choosing a layer and pressing down here, test. And there we can test to see if this luminosity mask is giving us a clean blend. And in this instance, it's doing a very good job, but I feel like it's darkening the tree around here and the roof as well. And that's because if we just end the test, we can see that in the mask, the tree is quite bright and so is the rooftop. And there's not enough contrast between the sky and the foreground. Essentially, we want the foreground to be dark and the sky to be light gray or white. So how can we make this selection? Well, there are two different ways. Firstly, we can go to this slider and we can just manipulate the mask any way we want and create a much more contrasting selection. And we can do this with any mask we create with Instamask. So we have huge flexibility in how we create our masks just using these sliders. Now I'm going to show you a different way to create a more contrasting mask. Now to do that, I'm going to delete this Instamask and I'm going to go to our channels. And here we have our red channel and you can see if we made a selection from our red channel that would include much of the tree and this building. If we go to our green channel that's a much better selection because the foreground is quite dark and the sky is quite light. But if we go to our blue channel we'll see we have a much better selection here. The tree is nice and dark, the buildings are nice and dark so I think this would give us a better selection of masks. And here's the great thing, we can develop our full set of 18 luminosity masks depending on the channel we want to use. So for the blue channel, we go up here and we press B. And here we create all of our luminosity masks, just like we did before. And now we can cycle through these luminosity masks and these are all luminosity masks based just on the blue channel. So if we go to Brights 1, we can see the Brights 1 luminosity mask 
from the blue channel that we saw before. And just as before, we can test our mask. So we can choose our blending layer and press test. And now we have a better blend because we haven't darkened the tree or the building. So if we're happy with that, I can just press apply and we've now blended these exposures and I can bring the opacity of this darker exposure down just so it's a bit more natural. And there we go. That's a very nice clean blend. And if we zoom into the building, we can see there's no black edging or white edging that we sometimes see when blending exposures. And when we're finished, we can press delete luminosity masks. And as you can see, we've deleted all of those luminosity masks. So we still have a small file size. So even though we have our 18 normal luminosity masks, we also have 18 red luminosity masks, 18 green luminosity masks, and 18 blue luminosity masks. So we have 72 luminosity masks to choose from, which will give us more choice when it comes to making a better selection for our exposure blending. But we don't have to limit ourselves to these luminosity masks. We now have a new easy to use point and click method where we can choose a spot on the image and develop a mask just around the luminosity of that area. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make this exposure invisible and I'm going to choose select lum. This means select luminosity. And you'll see we have our color picker tool and we just select the area that we want to create a mask around. So we press OK when we're happy. And now we've created a black and white mask. We can make this mask less restrictive and more open by using the plus tool here. You'll see that we are brightening up the mask. If we use the minus tool, we're making the mask more restrictive. So I just want to affect the window here. I don't want to affect any other part of the image. So I'm going for a really restrictive mask. I think this should do the job. Now in this example, I just want to affect the window. I don't want to apply the entire mask to the image. And the easiest way to do that is to paint in the selection. So I've selected the layer that I want to blend in. I'm going to press black M, which means black mask. White M means white mask. Then I'm going to make this layer visible and choose select. And you'll see our Insta mask has disappeared, but we're left with an active selection around the windows. So if I press this B button, that will give us a paintbrush and we choose our mask and we make sure the foreground is set to white and I'm going to hide the marching ants. And here I'm just going to paint in the window. I'll set the opacity to 100 for the brush. There we go. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this darker layer down just to make it a bit more natural. Let's say to around 60%. And there's the before and after. Now underneath select lum, we have select cull. And this is select color. It's going to do a very similar thing, but instead of making selections based on brightness, it makes selections based on color. For example, if I choose, let's say this area here and press OK, I just want to make a selection of the foreground without the light trails. And so I press OK. And here we have the yellows in the foreground, but we're not affecting any of the light trails. And of course, we can make the selection bigger and less restrictive by pressing the plus sign. So now we have a great selection of the foreground. So if we wanted, we could open up a saturation hue layer and we can open that up and change the hue or saturation of the foreground without affecting any other part of the image, just the yellow tones. There is another way to develop luminosity masks using Instamask, and that is via these RGBYCM buttons and the manual button. If we press the Y button, this stands for yellow, and it will create a mask selecting mainly the yellows. If we're happy with this mask, we press OK, and you'll see we actually create the mask there. Or we can press cyan or blue, and that gives us a better selection of the sky in general. Or we can press manual, and here we can open up the sliders and let's say we bring up blue, we bring up cyan too, and we can bring down the other sliders. And so here we are just really making a selection of the sky. And if we're happy, we press OK. And there is our mask. Now, even though we have a fantastic range of luminosity mask creators in Instamask, we can refine our masks even further. And we can do that by adding and subtracting masks. For example, I'm just going to press this X to delete the current Instamask. And I'm going to select luminosity. So I'm just going to select everything that's bright in this image. So I'm going to go for click on the light trails here. Press OK. 
and here we have our light trails. Now what if I want to combine that with the sky for example? So I want to create a mask with the sky and the light trails. Well I can do that by pressing combi or combine and this saves our existing mask to a file called original. Now I can press select color and choose the sky and press OK and this gives us a selection of the sky and then I simply press add and here we have a selection of the sky and the foreground and again we can open up a curves layer and I can change the luminosity of the sky and the light trails at the same time and we can also subtract channels let's say we have a mid-tones 3 channel but we feel like the shadows in the mid-tones 3 channel aren't dark enough so we can press combine again we always have to press this when we're adding and subtracting masks then we can open up let's say a darks 3 mask now we want to subtract this mask from our original exposure that we saved so we choose subbed and now we've subtracted those two masks so our shadows here are much darker than in the previous mask we can refine our masks a little bit further by choosing Photoshop standard refine function so we can make the selection smoother or increase the feather or contrast or we can add blur to our mask let's say our mask is a little bit too contrasting too sharp and we want to soften the selection if we press blur press ok we now blur our mask and of course we can always move the sliders to darken or brighten the mask now the top slider stands for shadows and this will darken our shadows the middle slider stands for mid-tones and moving it left will brighten our mid-tones moving it right will darken our mid-tones and the H sign stands for highlights and we can brighten our highlights by bringing that left and of course we can just press reset to reset the sliders so that's an overview of how we can create and refine masks but what about applying masks we've already looked at a couple of examples but let's look at another example say we have these two exposures of the fisherman in China here's the darker exposure and here's the brighter exposure we want to take the light from the darker exposure and add it to the lights in the brighter exposure so that we recover those highlights well let's say we choose a bright one mask now that's a very general selection so if we test that mask we'll see that we're flattening the contrast in all of the image we're not just affecting the lights in the lanterns so of course we can bring our sliders along to affect the mask however we can't really see what it looks like on the layer so I'm going to reset the sliders and I'm going to press live and now we have two windows open so I'm going to press Z and just zoom out on the left window so that we can see most of the image then I'm going to select the second window and I'm going to do the same here and just straighten them up a little bit and now when we move our slider you'll see the right window turns into the view of the mask whereas the left window is the full image right now the image is extremely flat you'll see we're removing much of the contrast but if we move our slider all the way along just so that in the mask we're selecting the lamps you can see that in the left window we're maintaining lots of the original contrast in the image so now we've pretty much just selected the lamps I'm going to bring the midtones along a little bit more and now if I want to refine this even further I can actually just select the paintbrush tool choose a black brush and I can just paint out these areas say so now let's have a look at the before and after here's before the exposure blending and here's after the exposure blended and you can see we've nicely blended the exposures without affecting the contrast in the image and having the live view allowed us to see what was happening in the mask and on the main layer so if you're happy with your selection you can close one of the windows press command and zero or control and zero choose your layer that you wish to blend and press apply and so now we've blended these two exposures and I can bring the opacity down as usual just to make it a more natural blend so now that we've looked at our masks and how to refine those masks and we've looked at how to test our masks and apply them and make them into selections we can also look at some of these other apply buttons now some of these are quite self-explanatory curves will create a curves layer levels are levels saturation and hue as we've already seen uh, this is a vibrance layer ph creates a photo filter save saves our selection so if we create a bright one mask we press save and that saves our mask for future just in case we want to use it again d and b creates a dodge and burn layer sharpen creates a sharpen layer noise creates a noise removal layer and orton 
creates an Orton effect layer and detail creates a details effect layer. And detail, Orton and sharpen all create smart objects. So it's a non-destructive process in your workflow. But let me show you how to use the dodge and burn function. I'm gonna choose select luminosity and I just wanna affect areas with this brightness. So I'm gonna press okay. And you'll see we have a very restrictive mask. Now, if I press D and B, we create a non-destructive 50% gray layer with our mask. So I can press this B button and this will select our paintbrush and we've got a nice white foreground here. I'm gonna bring the opacity down to around 60% and I'm just gonna paint in these areas. And you can see that we are dodging these areas and we're not affecting the areas around it. So if I paint here, it's not making any difference, but if I paint along here, it's brightened up those areas. So here is the before and after. Or if we delete this, I can choose select luminosity again, and I can select a dark area and press OK. And now we have an inverted mask. And let me just make this mask more restricted and I'll press dodge and burn again. Now, if I press brush, I'm gonna paint into the darker areas and you can see we're brightening them up. So I'm gonna choose lower opacity of 30%. See, we're brightening up our shadows. There's the before and after. And we won't affect any of the highlights. So I'm painting on the highlights and it's not affecting it. And let's say we wanna add more details to this particular image. Well, let's use a Brights One mask just to show you how to do this. I'm gonna make it a little bit more restricted. I'm gonna bring the highlights down a bit and the midtones and bring up the shadows a touch. And then I'm gonna choose detail. And this may take a second to run because as I say, it's making a smart object. Now we can choose a large or small radius. So if we choose a large radius, you'll see we're affecting the local contrast in the image. So I'm gonna choose 126 and press okay. And here is the before and after, before and after. And you can see we're creating some beautiful local contrast in certain areas. So if I zoom in, there's the before and after. So those are some examples of how we can apply the masks that we've created with Instamask. So as you can see, Instamask is an incredible tool which will help you craft any mask you want for your workflow very easily and very quickly. And it won't add any extra weight to your file size. It'll keep Photoshop running nice and quickly. So I hope you enjoy the panel. Thank you very much for watching.